Thanks, Dave. And uh, thank you to my co-authors. Anna Mills did most of the, most of the data analysis, and um, Paul Muir and his team at On Farm Research did most of the data collection over 20 years. So um, what we're looking at is some work that's involved in the Hill Country Futures program. Um, Paul and his team collected data for about 20 years from a resident pasture and um, no nitrogen fertiliser but the use of, of superphosphate and some lime on occasion. So it's fairly, fairly typical of Central Hawke's Bay, um, Pukawa um, area. What we need to understand is that for dryland farmers the issue is about moisture and moisture retention and we lose moisture from the system in two ways. It either evaporates from the soil surface or the plant surface or it transpires and goes through the plant. The more we can transpire through the plant, the more growth we have. So avoiding um, evaporation from the soil or the plant is what we're trying to achieve. So we wanted to look at this long-term data set. Evaporation from the soil surface or um, evapotranspiration is measured by the potential evapotranspiration. And this set of data from um, NIWA shows us that on average we've got 1,000 millimetres of water used or, or potentially used out of that system um, at Pukawa. Whether it's changed or not from the beginning of the century, we don't know. The rainfall is the bit that changes. So the rainfall goes up and down, and there's an average here of about 700 mils. So we've got a deficit of about 300 mils. Summer dry. Absolutely always going to be summer dry. So that's what we look like in spring. That's what we look like in summer. And what we find is that, obviously, as you'd expect, we grow more pasture in the spring than we do at any other time of the year, in the summer or in the autumn but huge variability in the past yields that we get. Now, traditionally, we would then create a growth curve and suggest to farmers, this is your pasture production curve, and here's the range that you can operate within. But we can also start to relate that pasture curve to other factors, so we can rate, relate it to water. And we can say that we can actually work out how much water you've had available to you from the soil, and we can calculate that you grow about 17 kilos of dry matter for every millimetre of water that's available in your environment. And we can then use that and go, well, on the 1st of October, your actual soil moisture deficit, how much of your bucket is actually emptied, is usually about 50 millimetres. And your bucket holds about 124 millimetres, and I can get that from SMAP fairly easily. So there's 74 millimetres available left at the 1st of October. If you have no rainfall in October, you're going to grow about 1,250 kilos of dry matter with what's left in your bucket, 17 times that 74. If you get the average rainfall for um, that period, you're going to get 50 millimetres of rainfall, and you're going to grow 2,000 kilos or 2,100 kilos of dry matter. So we can start to create predictive tools for farmers so they get an idea of what's happening in season, in time. Because we've got to farm for the spring, because that's the most important period that we have um, in these environments, and so we need to utilise the pasture that we have. I just want you to have a look at the energy load that goes on plants, or goes on to our pastures, in the difference between spring and summer. So this is the solar radiation. It's basically, that's the sunrise and sunset that you can see, and the days are a bit longer in December. That's the air temperature, so it's cooler in the spring than it is in the summer. The green line is the canopy soil surface temperature. When the soil is wet, the air temperature and the canopy temperature are about the same. But as soon as the soil is dry, all of that energy or heat load goes on to the plants. And we're now looking at a daily temperature of about 30 degrees, but a soil surface temperature of 45 degrees. If you have that for day after day after day, that cooks ryegrass and it cooks white clover. That's why those species don't persist in these sorts of environments. So, spring's our only reliable period of um, growth. We need to use that water as transpiration as much as possible, or we're going to lose it from the system as evaporation. Minimising evaporation is the key. Our resident pasture yield gives us a figure of about 17 kilos of dry matter per millimetre, and we need to recognise the impact of that energy load on the, the soil surface when we get into that summer period. So dryland farmers are farmers of spring water. Thank you.